Okay, so I don't blame you if you find buying the process of iPads stressful and confusing. There are so many options and directions that you can take. So that's why this video has been created to help you decide whether to get the new high-end M4 iPad Pro or settle up with its cousin, the new M2 iPad Air. We'll be investigating the differences in design, display, performance, battery life, accessories, and compatibility, storage and pricing, and end off with use case recommendations to help contextualize everything you've learned in this video to help you buy the right iPad for you. Starting off with the design, one of the weirdest things you'll notice is that the iPad Pro is thinner and lighter than the iPad Air, making the name convention of these devices just a tad bit confusing. You'd assume the opposite given the Air branding, but it's not the case this year. It'd be more fitting to think of the Air model as a lighter on your wallet, which we'll talk about pricing later in the video. Both models come in the 11 inch and 13 inch size variants. I have my hands on the 13 inch iPad Air and both of the 11 and 13 inch iPad Pro. The Pro models come with face ID sensors instead of touch ID found on the Air, a LiDAR scanner for better AR and depth perception, and a faster Thunderbolt USB-C port for enhanced transfer speeds. For a lot of people, I'm gonna go ahead and take a swing that a lot of these extra quality of life features that you'd find on the iPad Pro, it's not gonna make that much of a big impactful difference on your iPad experience, whether you have them or you don't have them. Although I will say the face ID is very convenient. I, I mean, I don't miss touch ID at all on the iPad Air. Moving on to the display differences, they are substantial only for people who care about these things. Otherwise, I'd argue the differences here are also negligible. So let me explain. If you are a tech enthusiast, you are going to love the fact that the iPad Pro comes with a beautiful 120 Hertz ProMotion tandem OLED display. It's arguably the best mobile display Apple has ever made. It is extremely vivid and sharp for all kinds of content that you see on here. This is the kind of display that is perfect for professionals wanting better color accuracy on their edits or someone who just wants the deepest blacks and contrast for the content that they consume. On the other hand, this same tech enthusiast would feel crippled by the fact that the iPad Air only comes with a 60 hertz display, no OLED, instead you'll get a liquid retina display that is still good in its own right, but not anywhere near close to what the Pro can offer. With all that being said though, if you aren't a big enthusiast of tech displays or you have just been content with 60 hertz displays your whole life, the iPad Air display is not gonna feel crippling at all. It'll feel exactly how Apple intended it to be, something that works and looks great at all angles for a lot of people. And still be a great companion for editing work and being color accurate enough to get the job done or to just consume content like it. Things still look good on here. I wanna make that very clear. Before we keep going though, I wanna thank Moth for partnering with me on this video and sending over their Stap Float Folio for my iPad. It's more than just a case. It lifts my iPad to eye level, which has really helped my posture during longer sessions. What I love most is the Movas vegan leather in sienna brown and white. It looks amazing in person and feels premium. It's also very lightweight and slim, altogether as thin as an iPhone, making it easy to carry around, whether it's in my backpack or in hand and I love the inclusion of corner protection ensuring my iPad stays safe from damage. The modular all-in-one design is incredibly versatile too. It includes a built-in pencil holder that not only keeps my Apple Pencil secure and easily accessible, but also doubles as a ruler when it's removed. This setup adapts to whatever I'm doing, whether it's typing, taking notes, or just watching something. Whether I'm at my desk, the kitchen island, or outside, plus setting it up is a breeze as it unfolds so clean like origami. Also, I love using Sidecar with this folio and my Mac as it gives me a seamless mobile work setup. If you rely on your iPad like I do on a daily basis, the Moft Snap Float Folio is a game changer that you'll quickly integrate into your daily routine. Click the link down below to buy yours today. Thank you, Moft, for partnering with me on this video. Moving on to the performance differences of both iPads, the Pro model comes with a brand new M4 chip, while the Air comes with the M2 chip from the past. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here because it's the same dance we go through every year when iPads come out. I have a hard time believing there is a substantial amount of people on planet Earth that can feel the difference between M2 and M4 on their iPads 
for the kind of work that most people do. And, and that's no shade against M4. Like, let me make that clear, being the new chip and all. It is a better chip by every stretch of the imagination. And if you know what you need to do on iPad requires the maximum power of M4, you probably aren't even watching this video. But, like, the fact that you're watching this, contemplating the Pro or the Air, tells me that the performance differences between both chips are negligible for your personal use case and not something that you should be too hung up on. I wanna make something very clear. Like all current iPads right now feel fast to me. From the standard iPad to the iPad Air to the iPad Pro, it is in some ways the curse of just Apple like being so good at making chips that just age so well. Something that has a much more noticeable difference are the accessories. While both iPads support the new Apple Pencil Pro and the Apple Pencil USB-C, they do offer magic keyboards that have notable design differences, especially if you are considering getting a 13-inch iPad. For starters, the newer magic keyboard for iPad Pros come with an all-new internal aluminum design that is identical to what you'd find on MacBooks with the addition of function row keys that have proven to be extremely useful from my experience. Experience. If you are considering a 13-inch iPad, the size of the trackpad for the Pro model is also significantly larger than the one you'd find on the iPad Air version. From my experience, this has been huge from a comfort perspective. It's made it possible for me to want to use an iPad more like a laptop a lot of the times, with a lot more space for my hands to rest on too. The way that the Magic Keyboard is designed for the iPad Air, the limitations of my hand placement make it a little bit of a harder sell for me personally with this newer version existing on top of the fact that they literally cost the same like both of them are 349 for the 13 inch version and 299 for the 11 inch version even though the pro version is a way better keyboard in my opinion so just something to keep in mind i do want to touch on battery life quickly from my experience i can't really tell the difference here even apple quotes it to be identical on their website so I wouldn't use this as a deciding factor, but I, I will say like the iPad Air is using less power all around. So hypothetically, it should last a little bit longer, but it's not gonna be a huge difference. Okay, so now let's talk about money. That's ultimately what dictates the decisions a lot of us make. And the iPad Pro 11 inch starts at 999, the 13 inch starts at 1299, both coming with 256 gigs of memory on the base with upgradable storage up to two terabytes. While the iPad Air 11 inch starts at 599 and the 13 inch starts at 799. So it's a $400 difference for the 11 inch model and a $500 difference for the 13 inch model. If we did a just for the storage differences and you got a 256 gigabyte iPad Air instead to make this whole comparison a little bit more comparable, then the 11 inch would cost $699, the 13 inch will cost $899, making the difference now $300 and $400 respectively. So in general, if it's not clear to you already, the difference is a lot. Like it is a big cost difference. You can get an iPad Air and a Magic Keyboard and still be under or just barely at the cost of a single iPad Pro. I wanted to share all of this pricing because I wanted it to give us more context as we move into the most important part of this video, which is my recommendations for specific users and use cases. Starting with students and casual users, I'm going to assume most of you are budget conscious and you want to save money. The iPad Air is the no-brainer here. You get the full iPad experience. Like, let me make that very clear. There is almost nothing you can do on the Pro that you can't do on the Air. The M2 chip is still a very capable and powerful computer in 2024, and you can get a Magic Keyboard that still does a great job, even though, you know, I it's not as comfortable in my opinion, all for a much cheaper price, which is what is most important for people like you. You do miss out on all the bells and whistles of things like Face ID, for example, but who cares when the goal is to save money while still getting a very identical experience. When it comes to professionals in the space, either creatively or you run a business or you know whatever the case is, I do think there is value in going with the Pro model, more so if you're going for a larger iPad. I really, really do believe that the 13 inch M4 iPad Pro is the closest thing we've ever gotten to an enjoyable, minimal compromising iPad experience that works great as a laptop 
thanks to the updated Magic Keyboard. I could not use the iPad Air plus the Magic Keyboard every day all the time because the comfort level difference is just too much for me personally, especially when I've tried out both of them. On top of the fact that the iPad Pro combo is actually just lighter than the Air and its Magic Keyboard. So our backs are gonna appreciate that a little bit as well. If you are considering getting an 11 inch iPad, you don't get the same larger trackpad and hand space benefits like you do on the 13 inch iPad Pro. So at that point, I would only go with the 11 inch Pro if you absolutely need ProMotion, Face ID, a thinner iPad as those are all really the difference. If none of that matters to you, I would go with 11 inch iPad Air as it is more than capable for a lot of people. Anyway, that is my advice for helping you choose the right iPad for your life. And if it's not obvious already, I am an iPad Pro guy. And if you guys wanna know more about how I feel about the latest M4 iPad Pro, I uploaded my latest review. They can click right here to watch now.